Hallelujah. So we're back. What else? The final lesson of the Count the Cost of Discipleship, the Count the Cost course. You know, and I pray that that throughout this course that you've learned some things, you know, concerning discipleship and being enlightened. You know, and you know, we're going to finish our cost benefit analysis. You know, uh, we're going to sum up the cost for the day. And so this is what we've been doing, counting the cost. And, you know, after we, um, we had counted the benefits, you know, and so this is a cost benefit analysis. And, you know, that's when you take the benefits and you put it on one side of the scale and you put the cost on the other side of the scale, you know, and, this is what's considered a cost-benefit analysis uh, or the weighing scale approach for decision-making. You know, put the positive on one side and negative on the other, and whichever one wins, either the cost or benefit, you know, whichever one's the heaviest, then uh, that's the winner. And so we've been going over the cost, and we know that there were some yah, some yah, some yah, some benefits, you know, but there is some some cost involved as well, you know, and, and it's, I'm pretty certain that, that you, you've you uh, gathered that it's not, it's not cheap, it, it is a significant cost, especially if you love the world. And so this is the summation of the cost, and, and this is the fifth uh, cost number five. This is the fifth cost. And this cost is found in Yochanan 15, 8, where it says, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples, or some, some version says, proving yourselves to be my disciples. You know, so this is very, very um, important aspect of discipleship. And that is that you have to bear fruit. Yoke 9, 15, 1 through 8. Um, by the way, if anyone want to read, please raise your hand. You know, Yoke 9, 15, 1 through 8, it, it reads, it says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now, Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Hallelujah. You know, so here it is, we're, we're taught that Yahushua is the true vine. And all right, so the vine, you know, um, spiritually speaking, represents the spiritual ecclesia, also success and prosperity. So the Messiah said, I am the true vine. You know, it's evident that the vine speaks to the ecclesia in, um, in this passage, you know, seeing that all the disciples are a part of the with Yahshua, which, which, uh, is actually the ecclesia you know so but it's important to understand that it, it speaks to the spiritual ecclesia you know because you had a natural ecclesia and you have a spiritual ecclesia and yahshua's ecclesia is the spiritual ecclesia it also speaks to success and prosperity because in times past you know some people used to make make all their living just off of you know their one bond you know, 
And so that's, that's important to know. Now, also we, we spoke of fruit, you know, Yahshua said that one has to bear fruit and that fruit, spiritually speaking, speak to works. And so when you look at Yermi Yahu 17.10, says, I, Yahuwah, search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deed. You know, so hereby we see a witness that the fruit speaks to works, spiritually speaking. And also we have a second witness in Micah 7.13, which, uh, which reads, Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doing." You know, and so the fruit speaks to the works. If they're if they're um, good fruit, then it's the works of Elohim. If they're bad fruit, then it's works of the wicked. You know, and so here it is. Messiah said, "I am the true vine. He is the true ecclesia, the spiritual ecclesia." You know, and his father is the husbandman. Now, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And now we know that a branch. Is simply an extension of the, of the vine. And that's what we're called to be. You know, that's what every disciple, you know, is called to be. Extensions of the vine. Extensions of Yahshua, in other words, his body. You know, the branches, the arms, the legs, you know, when, when you reference the body, you know, the arms and legs are called limbs. Limbs we call branches. You know, so, and this is where uh, the fruit is supposed to uh, be born. You know, so we see here a spiritual picture of the spiritual ecclesia and those that, those disciples that are in it bringing forth good works. Because we know Yahushua is good. And so, you know, if you're of him, then the works that you do is would also be good. And so if you bring forth much fruit, it says that the father will, um, he'll purge that branch. So he'll cut parts away. And sometimes that's kind of painful, you know, but you just have to know that that's part of the process, you know? So, you know, you, you, you see you bearing fruit, you know, and then you feel like you're getting clipped. You may be, you may be getting purged, you know, but it's only so that you'll bring forth more fruit. Now, Verse four is, is, is really big because he speaks of abiding. Uh, he says, abide in me. And he says, I in you. You know, and again, in, in verse five, he says, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. So you can't bring forth fruit at all unless you abide in him. Okay. And then in verse six, he says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and it's withered, you know, so anytime a branch is disconnected from the vine, we know it dies. And so this is what he's speaking of. Now, he says in verse seven, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you know, then you should ask what ye will and it shall be done. You know, so to abide in, uh, in him, you know, and for him to abide in you is to have his words abiding in you. You know, and so he said his father is glorified when we bear much fruit. And if we do so, then we shall be his disciples. So you can do everything we, we went through up to this point, you know, and um, not bear fruit, and you still wouldn't be a true disciple. Not one of work, anyhow. So, again, Yoga 9 1 8 taught us that if we're to become disciples of Yahushua, then we must abide in Yahushua. We must abide in him and bring forth much fruit. But that's not all. It also taught that Yahushua must also abide in us. And this is a very important point, you know, that oftentimes get overlooked. Yes, we have to abide in him, but we also have to make certain that he's abiding in us, okay? Because you can, uh, it's, it's, a, it's possible that one can abide in him, 
you know, at least believe they're abiding in him and he not be abiding in them. You know, so you can be fooled. And therefore, let us consider an example of those who felt they were abiding in him and bore much fruit, yet he wasn't abiding in them. You know, so we're going to take a look at an, at an example of, of some people who, who felt they were abiding in him and even brought forth much fruit, only to find out they weren't abiding in him. And remember, fruit represents words. You know, so Matthew Yahoo 7, 21 through 23. Uh, have my first reader, uh, uh, Sister Ebony, but Brother Joshua, um, could you read Matthew Yahoo 7, 21 through 23, please? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Hallelujah. So here it is. We see that everyone that says, Lord, Lord, everyone that calls the Mashiach, Lord, you know, um, they're not going to necessarily get in. You know, but what I want you to pay close attention to is that he says, many will say it to me in, in that day. You know, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name has cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. So here it is. We're talking about would-be believers who felt like they were believing and they 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 were doing many wonderful works in the Messiah's name, and yet he never knew them, i.e., he was not abiding in them, even though they felt they were abiding in him, he wasn't abiding in them, hence he never knew them. And the reason he never knew them is because they was workers of iniquity. You see. The only way you're going to abide in that he's going to abide in you is if his words abide in you because he is the word. And so the only way that he's going to abide in you is if his words abide in you. You know, we're told in, in verse 21 says, but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven, that those are the ones that's going to enter into the kingdom of heaven even those that do the will of his father, you know? And so if we take a look at 1 Yochanan 4, 7, and 8, it teaches us a bit about his father. It says, um, beloved, let us love one another for love is of Elohim. And everyone that loveth is born of Elohim and knoweth Elohim. He that loveth not, no, if not Elohim, for Elohim is love. So, in other words, the Father is love. Okay? The Father is love. And so, we have to do the will of love, which of the love which is in heaven, in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, with that, with that being said, you know, let us consider Yochanan 15, 9 through 14. It says, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Now, Yahshua is saying, as his Father, who is love, loved him, that's the same way he loved you. And that's the same way he loves us. And he says, continue in his love. And then he, he, he explains what that is. He says in verse 10, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So in other words, he said, hey, my father, uh, love is my father, and the love of my father is his commandments. And I abided in his love by keeping his commandments. 
And so if you're going to abide, abide in my love, if you're going to, you're going to have to um, keep my commandments. Verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's the type of love he had for them. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. So you want to be the friend of Elohim, want to be the friend of Yahshua? Then you have to do whatsoever he commands us. So the father loved Yahushua by instructing him every step of the way while he walked upon the earth. And if you recall, Messiah said, I, I do nothing but what the Father tells me to do. I don't say anything except for what the Father tells me to say. You know, so everything he was saying and doing was via the instructions of his Father. You know, to say it another way, everything that he was doing and saying was via the instructions of love. Because his Father is love. Okay? And so... The same thing, you know, applies for us. And if we consider that this is also the way Yahushua loves us, hence he tells us in verse 10 that if we keep his commandments, i.e. his instructions, ye shall abide in his love. That is, ye shall abide in the Father because his love is the love of the Father. And so the love of the Father is, and to abide in the love of the Father is to keep his commandments. And so if we're going to abide in his love, even as he abided in his father's love, then that means we're going to have to keep the commandments of Elohim and the commandments of Yahushua, which ultimately are the commandments of Elohim because he was the one telling them everything to say and do. That's love. And if you think about, you know, um, those of you that are parents and you think about, you know, how you're raising your kids, you're constantly instructing them so that they don't get hurt. You're constantly instructing them to keep them out of harm's way. That's love. You know, and so this is what the Heavenly Father did for his son, Yahushua, and this is what Yahushua does for us via the word of Elohim. He instructs us every step of the way so that we can stay out of trouble, so that We'll stay out of harm's way. You know, this is precisely what Yahushua was trying to get across in Yochanan 14 as well. So let's go to Yochanan 14. Um, and Yochanan uh, 14, 15 through 24. Uh, Pastor Sister Kim, read Yochanan 14, 15 through 24, please. Hallelujah. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Ruach of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet in a little while the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye, all, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father. I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Adonai, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Yahushua answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the father which sent me. Hallelujah. So we see in verse 15, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. There's no way that you can love Yahushua outside of keeping his commandments. Even as, you know, there was no way for him to love his father without keeping his father's commandments. You know, and so he says in verse 19 that ye shall live also. And in verse 20, at that day when you're living, that is 
ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. See, this is the way that he was in his Father, even by uh, continuing in his Father's love, by being in his love, that is, by keeping his commandments. And then, likewise, you know, he will be in us when we keep his commandments. And so the Father, um, he will be in the Father, and we'll be in him, and he'll be in us. You know, and verse 21, he says, He that have my commandments and keep of them, it is he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. You have to understand that his commandments is the manifestation of him in us in a very big way. You know, this, these are, this is the bread of life. His commandments are the bread of life, you know, by which a man shall eat and live. You know, uh, in verse 23, it, it tells us, it says, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. This is the only way we're going to abide in Elohim and have Elohim abiding in us. Is if we keep his words, if we keep Yahshua's commandments and sayings. And those who, who don't do so, the father says, they don't love my son. They don't love Yahushua. The ones who don't do so is because they don't love him. So you have to understand that's that's huge implications. You know, for not keeping Yahshua's commandments. Now, take that into account and consider that many people never even heard about Yahshua having commandments. You know, you ask the average person, they say, well, you know, well, the love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, uh, heart and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, those wasn't Yahshua's commandments. Those, that was his summation of Torah. You know, but he did give forth many commandments. And so we're going to just read through those commandments. So if you've never heard them at any time, you're going to hear them, hear them now and if you stay tuned. So... Uh, Yeshua's commandments 1 through 16. Repent for the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. Follow Yahshua. Don't think that Yahshua came to destroy the law of the prophets. Say a lie. Do not be angry with your brother without a cause. Settle differences with brethren before offering anything to Elohim. Agree with your adversary quickly. If you're married, do not lust after others. If any part of the body offend thee, do away with it. Do not divorce itself for fornication. Do not swear at all. Let your communication be yea or nay. It's just not evil. If you're compelled to do something, go the extra mile. Don't refuse the loan. And if you're not, and if you're not repaid, don't ask for it back. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute. Be complete as your Father in heaven is complete. Take heed that you do your alms before men. Take heed that you that you do not your alms before men. Sorry. Um, 17 through 33. Do not pray as the hypocrite to be seen of men. Pray in secrecy. When you pray, do not use many repetitions. Many, do not use vain repetitions. Pray in the manner... Yahushua taught his disciples to pray what they call the Lord's Prayer. And heavenly Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, etc. Fast in secrecy. Don't lay up for yourselves treasure upon earth. Lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. Don't worry about the necessities of this life. Seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness. Don't worry about tomorrow. Judge not that ye be not judged. Do not counsel your brethren on issues you've yet to resolve. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Ask, seek, and knock. Beware of false prophets 
which come to you in sheep's clothing. Learn what Yah meant by he'll have mercy and not sacrifice. Pray that Yah will send laborers into his vineyard. Be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Beware of men. When men take you before the courts for Yahushua's sake, take no thought how or what he shall speak. During the time of, of the beast's reign, when they persecute you for Yahushua's sake, in one city flee to another. Don't fear those that hate Yahushua. What Yahushua tell you in darkness, speak ye in the light. Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in him. Don't think that Yahushua came to send peace on earth. Do not love anyone more than Yahushua. Take up your cross and follow Yahushua. Choose, lose your life that, that you may find it. Receive the Yahushua's disciples and prophets and help them. Go to Yahshua and be overworked and want rest. Take Yahshua's yoke upon yourself and learn of him. Do not blast blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Understand the parable of the sword and the seed. Leave the blind leaders uh, of the blind alone. Take heed and beware of the doctrines of the Yahudah. Be converted and become his little children. Take heed not to despise the little children of the kingdom. If one of the brethren of the kingdom trespass against you, discuss your cross with them alone. If your brother will not hear you, take with the one, one or two more and discuss their faults. If he shall neglect to hear them, tell it to the ecclesia. Always forgive the brethren of the, of the kingdom. If you're able to be asking them for the kingdom's sake, then do so. If um, give, give up everything and follow Yahushua to become complete. Serve one another. Do what the Yahudim said do, but not as they, uh, not, uh, not as they've done. Be not ye called rabbi. Call no man upon the earth your father. Do not be called master. You know, don't exalt yourself, but do humble yourself. Take heed that no man deceive you. When you hear wars and rumors of wars, don't be troubled, for it's just the beginning. Understand the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. When you see the abomination of desolation and you're in Israel, flee into the mountains. Pray that your escape from the abomination of desolation doesn't happen in the winter nor on the Sabbath. When someone says Yahushua is here or there, believe or not, learn a parable of the fig tree. Be ready and watching for the return of Yahushua. Understand the days of Noah so that you'll understand Yahushua's return. Go, baptize and teach to observe all of Yahushua's commands, words, and sayings. Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Forbid not anyone to do who does a miracle in the name of Yahushua. Have faith in Elohim. When you stand praying, forgive if you have all against any that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Beware of the scribes. Remember that Yahushua, remember that Yahushua has told us all things concerning concerning the end. Take ye heed, watch and pray that she enter into temptation concerning Yahushua's return. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy when they when they persecute you and separate you for Yahushua's name's sake. Take heed, therefore, how you hear. Make certain that your righteousness doesn't amount to sin. If you love Yahushua, keep his commandments. Take heed and beware of covetousness. Let your loins be dirty about him, your lights burning. Make yourselves like men and wait for that for their out of nine. When you go with thine adversary to the magistrate, as you're in the way, try to make a deal with him. He that have a purse, let him take it. And likewise, a script, and he that have no sword, let 
let him sell his garment and buy one. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Be born again. Say not the harvest time is coming, for the harvest is now. Watch one another's feet. Love one another as Yahushua loved us. Abide in Yahushua. And let his words abide in you. Continue in Yahushua's love. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. Understand Yochanan and the Baptist role of scripture. Labor for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. Eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Learn the meaning of the parable of the wheat and, and the tares. Learn what the, the Ruach or the Spirit saith unto the churches who have an ear to hear. Let them hear. Understand the coming war betwixt the beast and the saints. All right, so those are the commandments of Yahushua. You know, those are to abide in us as we abide in him by doing it. You know, and that's, that's necessary for us to become true disciples you know so that concludes the discipleship course but uh, I guess I got another paragraph we're proven to be true disciples of Yahushua when we abide in him and he abides in us we've learned that it is possible for us to be fooled into thinking that we abide in Yahushua but, but without actually abiding in him and without him abiding in us. So we don't want to be like that group, you know, that says, Lord, Lord, you know, do we not do any wonderful works in your name? Yes, they bore fruit, but they wasn't fruit. It wasn't good fruit. It wasn't fruit of love. That is, it wasn't the fruit that comes from doing the commandments of, of um, Yahshua. It was fruits of wickedness that came from them doing, doing things on their own, out of their flesh nature, not out of their spiritual nature, like unto Yah. So, you know, yeah, you have some folks that do a lot of nice things, but what's the motivation for those nice things? They have many wonderful works, you know, but if it's not because of the commandments of Yahushua, if it's not because of Yahushua abiding in them, then they're just, they're just fleshly works. And that won't cut it. You know, the only way we can abide in him and he in us is by continuing in his love, which is to say by constantly doing his commandments, words, and sayings, thereby proving ourselves to be his true disciples. And that's that's the goal, you know, is to become a true disciple. You know, if you're gonna go through and put all those put in all those costs then we want to make sure we're victorious on the other end and so that's the discipleship uh, course you know you've heard the benefits you've heard the costs weigh it on the scale of your mind see which one outweighs the other you know and go from there you know and that said you know i want to just touch on you know the vision, goals, and mission of BYA. That's, that's, the, the, that's the count the cost course, right? Not the discipleship course. Right, that's the count the cost course. All right, so, you know, I want to talk about the vision of, of BYA. And as um, many of you may have, may have heard me speak of, you know, the vision is to have a school of discipleship, you know, and that school of discipleship is to be likened unto a boarding school, you know, where the students would actually live on campus, you know, that they would actually, actually live there. You know, so the vision is to have a school of discipleship, which not only teaches the students what Yahushua taught, but also the way Yahushua taught it, and that is within a communal setting. 
um, and which was totally dependent on the Father, you know, because Messiah and his apostles were totally dependent on the Father. You know, something that speaks to that is Matthew Yahoo 6, 25 through 34. Sister Rochelle, could, would you mind reading Matthew Yahoo 6, 25 through 34, please? Okay, well, it reads, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor let your body, nor, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you taking thought can add one cubit unto his statue? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore if Elohim so clothed the grass of the field, which to today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after these things do the Gentiles see. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the thereof. You know, and so here it is, it's, it's evident that, you know, they were dependent upon Yah and, and his Messiah is telling them, you know, take no thought for your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to put on. You know, uh, don't worry about uh, what you're going to drink. The Father is well able to furnish these things for us. What we need to worry about worry about as would be disciples is seeking the uh first seeking the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness. You know, because if we get that then all these things would be added to, uh, to us. You know, and so you know that is the vision, you know, and the mission, the overall mission is the building of um of true disciples, you know, producing, you know, true disciples, not only to produce true disciples of Yahushua Messiah, but also to replicate the model by which we can, uh, we do so, you know, and thereby affording the opportunity for some graduate disciples to become apostles sent out to establish sister faith based communities, you know, so that will fulfill the, the uh, Great Commission. Matthew Yahoo 28, 19 and 20, and go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Ruach HaKadosh, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You know, and as a second witness, Yochanan 17, 18 through 23, it says, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they, they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also that shall believe in me through their word. That speaks to us. That they may be one, as thou, the Father, art in me, and I in thee, and they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in love, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. You know, and so this, this is the mission and the overall goal 
just to become a gateway into the kingdom of Elohim. You know, Matthew Yahoo 16, 13 through 19 reads, it says, when Yahushua came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man am? And they said, some, some say that thou art yoking down the Baptist, others Elias, and others um, Yami Yahu or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Messiah, the son of the living El, son of the living Elohim. And Yahushua answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barion. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Kephas, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So I'm convinced that we too can receive the keys to the kingdom of Elohim if we become as Simon Bar Jonah. Simon means one that's hearing, and Bar Jonah means son of the dove. So you put it together, we have the hearing son of the dove. The dove represents the Ruach Kapodesh, so the one who's truly hearing the spirit of truth. You know, that is, if we come to truly believe that Yahushua is the Mashiach, the son of the living Elohim, you know, so if we become as Simon, Simon Barjona, if we become as those who are hearing, you know, um, hearing sons of the Ruach HaKodesh, even the uh, spirit of truth, and truly believe that Yahushua is the Mashiach and the son of the living Elohim, we too can receive the keys to the kingdom. You know, and I really believe that, and that's that's uh, the motivation behind the vision, the mission, and the goals. You know, and that concludes what I have to speak with you today. So that concludes this lesson. So I'm going to stop the recording. But before I do, I'm going to Say Yiba Reka, Yahoo by Yus Mareka, Yahoo Panai, the Lake of Ahi Kaneka, Yusa Yahoo Panai, the Lake of La Sayu, La Kansalon. May Yahoo bless thee and keep thee. May Yahoo lift up his face upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May Yahoo um, Yahoo lift up his confidence upon thee and give thee peace. May Yahoo put his name upon thee and you will be blessed. Hallelujah. You know, I speak Yah's name upon you and you will be blessed. Amen.